Hi, and welcome to all Pilot Project team members. As we move forward in the discovery phase of our projects, uh, the next activity we're going to be taking part in over the next few weeks is called an interview for empathy. Uh, in this tutorial, I want to make clear the learning goals of that activity, and I just want to explain uh, the process and how it's going to work. Uh, really, the overall goal is to be upfront and transparent uh, so that you guys can revisit this video if in a couple weeks you're not sure what you're being asked to do or what you need to do. So. Again, we're just modeling a, a blended learning strategy about how you can communicate uh, a lesson or a unit with your students, so hopefully you can, you can use this in your class. Um, this is not an original idea. It was uh, taken from the Global Online Academy uh, Catalyst cards, which are cards for uh, kind of strategies of, of, for blended learning, um, and you can see them here. So here's the actual strategy card from the Global Online Learning Academy. Again, this is a communication strategy or blending learning strategy to communicate your learning goals with your students. Um, so in this video, I'm going to use this, uh, use this card, use the three goals here to try to make it clear uh, to you guys of what we're asking for over the next few weeks with the interview uh, for empathy activity. If you'd like to learn more about the Global Online Learn Learning Academy or the public learning goals kind of lesson, you can view this video uh, link here. Uh, but now on to the interview for empathy activity. First thing you're gonna wanna know is where to access kind of resources and information. So the best place to start is the Tech and Innovation Projects page. So depending on what team you're on, you'll see over on the left column, navigation bar, you can just simply click on the team and you'll be brought to your team page. If you scroll down on that page, you'll see any upcoming uh, information, resources, or lessons that uh, pertain to you and your team. So if you scroll down here, you can see that you find an interview for em empathy activity. Um, you can make a copy of this uh, activity by simply clicking on this link. I'm going to go ahead and click on the, what the Google Doc looks like and here you'll find the instruction. So inside the Google Doc you'll find uh, description and instructions and kind of interview tips that you can use uh, over the next few weeks. So overall um, your, our goal here is to uh, interview students, teachers, admin, or even a parent if you like, and the real purpose is to get a better understanding of the current experience they're having at ASFM. And when I say current experience, I'm talking about the current experience with the project that you're working within. So it could be the blended learning refinement, it could be digital citizenship, e-portfolio, or uh, the current inspiring learning spaces that they're working in. So remember, um, and you're not going to be working on this alone. So um, if I move down to instruction and some interview tips, during, the, uh, during a workshop on Tuesday afternoon, we'll be going over and running you through um, some of these interview tips. Uh, starting with number one, kind of ask why like a three-year-old. So if anyone out there has a three-year-old, you know how many questions and why, why, why. When you're conducting an interview, um, it's, a, it's best practice to kind of ask why like a, like a three-year-old. Another tip is to uh, solicit stories. So rather than asking direct questions, how can you so solicit stories? Um, and and one, one way they recommend this is using this kind of prompt here is tell me uh, the last time you, and you fill it in with, a, with an appropriate ending there. So just by saying tell me the last time you, uh, solicit stories more than just kind of direct questions and answers. Also try to stay neutral, so try not to put too much of your own perspective. Uh, sit in silence, so embrace that silence uh, because sometimes it takes people a little bit of time to think of good answers. Take photos if you can. Uh, write down, capture direct qu quotes, so uh, the best tool for these interviews is a good old-fashioned notebook or if you're using a digital device it's always nice to record them as well. And of course, if you're working with especially younger students, it's really nice to get drawings because um, drawings can really tell, uh, tell or give us lots of information to review back to. Um, so if you look at the interview process map, this is directly from the D school. Um, obviously, you introduce yourself. You kind of explain a little bit of the purpose. Um, build rapport if you, you know, you've never met the person, but in this case, you probably already have rapport. And then you go through those interview tips, as I just mentioned. Um, now, as I said, uh, here the steps kind of clearly defined. So one, you're going to identify a, a colleague, a student, a parent, or a member of ASFM that you'd like to interview. So we're recommending three student or three teachers, 
um, three students and a parent or a, a community member. You could also uh, add an admin in here. But again, we're not mandating this. This is um, up to you uh, who you want to uh, interview and how many people. So make sure you map your questions out ahead of time, but also um, you know, these interviews can be organic. Uh, and that's the whole purpose. You're not really sure where, where they might go because uh, asking a why question or a follow-up might take you in a different place. And of course, um, take notes and you're gonna just have to be ready the next time we meet, which is not until November sometime, to uh, take these notes and bring them back to our team because we're gonna do an activity where we share out these discoveries um, from our different interviews. Um, again, you're not going to be alone on this. Uh, during Tuesday's workshop, we're going to be going through a, uh, you know, um, a presentation and a workshop on how to prepare uh, good interview questions. And I'll briefly show you the presentation just in case you're not able to make it on that Tuesday afternoon. So just to run you through the presentation just quickly, if you weren't there on the, on the workshop, uh, it's the design thinking, it's a discovery activity, and we're doing empathy interviews. Um, again, Clicking through the presentation, we see that we're, we're still on the discovery phase and we're figuring out, um, you know, how do I approach this problem? Now, why do we do uh, imp empathy interviews? And it's really just to get a better understanding of the user's experience. And in this case, it's going to be teachers, students, admin, and possibly parents. Um, this one, uh, I don't want to get into too much details, but it's a great example of how the designer of the MRI machine, um, Doug Dietz, he's a 24-year veteran for General Electric, um, was really proud of the machine he designed, but it turned out after visiting the hospital and watching the doctors and uh, technicians use it, he always saw patients coming in very stressed, crying, and especially kids. And, he's, and he saw that 80% of kids had to be um, sedated for the MRI because the machine was so scary. And the problem with being sedated is that a lot of times anesthesiologists had to be on call or ready to you know, sedate the kids so they'd get into this machine. And it turns out it was causing a lot of stress for families and kids. And so he went back and after interviewing lots of doctors, nurses, kids, parents, um, he had to redesign the machine to make the experience better. And this is what he came up with. So again, just kind of a, an example of the importance of interviewing. Uh, to try to get a better understanding of the, the user experience. So we'll be going through some brainstorming activities. You can see here, um, we'll be given three minutes to write down as many questions, uh, interview questions as you can. Uh, we'll come together as a group, uh, build on those ideas, and then the final uh, kind of activity will be to reorganize these into kind of possible themes. Uh, just some reminders again for some of your questions. Make sure they're open-ended questions and not closed. So remember, encourage storytelling. Um, it's it's a little bit you can get uh, you know better information from stories rather than kind of direct questions. Don't forget to embrace the silence. Um, you know, try not to kind of butt in. Just let people think about what uh, they want to say. Um, again, anyone with a three-year-old, uh, I think can understand this, but really um, make sure you're probing and asking follow-up questions so you can really get a better understanding of, of the user and their experience. Um, and a final activity, if you're working with kids, um, even, even adults, sometimes it's nice to challenge them to kind of use drawings to, to tell stories. And so hopefully at the end of the activity, um, the, the group has come up with lots of interview questions that you guys can use. And if I go back to this document, um, the one that's uh, called Empathy Interview, which you can find on the, the PowerSchool Learning page, um, you'll see that there's a space down here for specific questions. So as the, the questions are being kind of brainstormed and refined, uh, the team is going to add some possible que interview questions in their specific um, uh, area here so that you can refer to this, this document uh, for ideas as you go out and conduct your interviews. So I hope this um, video or this tutorial made our learning goals clear. Um, it's my first time doing it, but I uh, hope that they'll get better and and hopefully um, you can try this uh, in your class and sharing uh, learning goals with your students. All right, thanks and bye.